in the two dimensions, your equations were sum of the force along x to be 0, sum of the force along y to be 0, and a moment to be 0. So basically, you're looking at three equations. Then for the three dimensions, you get the resultant force that goes to zero and the resultant moment that goes to zero. The first one gives you three equations. That means sum of the force along x, sum of the force along y, and sum of the force along z. This one here gives you another three equations. You can add this up and you get six equations. So that's the <coughs> equations you get when you work with the problems whether you have in the three dimensions or you have the problems in two dimensions. Now <coughs> from the math you know that the number of unknowns you can solve in a given problem are equal to the number of equations. So if you have three equations then the <coughs> max unknown you can handle would be 3. Same thing here, if you have 6 equations, then your maximum unknowns you can handle would be 6. Now, <coughs> the problems where your number of unknowns match the number of equations, those problems are known as statically determinate. So <coughs> If I take, let's say, a beam, let's say you have a beam with a hinge, and here then you have <coughs> a roller on the other end, and then you have some force here, again this point being A, this point being B, then you get this reaction here, a reaction here, then you get another unknown reaction here as A1. So <coughs> for this problem, you have three unknown forces are going to be equal to three equations of equilibrium. So you can write three equations from equilibrium and you have three unknowns. So the problem like this, they are known as statically determinate problem. That means the equations which you get from <coughs> the conditions of equilibrium are sufficient to solve for all the unknowns in a given problem. But let's look at a different case. I just add a roller 